Hey guys, this is Jan for Chess24. In this video I'm going to take a look at what many people have already called the game of the century so far. A truly spectacular game. It was played in the Danzu Super Grandmaster Tournament in China. A tournament featuring most of China's best players. Wang Yu is playing Ding Liren, Yu Yangyi and the 16-year-old prodigy Wei Yi, whom many people are already comparing to Magnus Carlsen. He's rated above 2700 at his age and he's the guy who features on the white side in this game. He's playing one of the two foreigners in the tournament, Lazaro Bruzon Batista from Cuba. Here we get a picture of the protagonists and it was gonna be a very spectacular game indeed. So let's get right to it. Wei Yi does open with one e4 as he normally does and Lazaro Bruzon picks up the gauntlet and goes for c5, the uncompromising Sicilian defense. We have a little bit of move order trickery in the opening. White is before committing to d4, trying to feel out what setup Black wants to play and Bruzon by playing e6 and a6 indicates that he wants to go for the so-called Taimanov or Khan variation. Bishop e2, once again waiting for Black to show his cards. d5 is possible here. But then white would take and go d4 wasn't to bruzon's liking he goes knight to c6 and now Wei Yi says okay i was just kidding i do want to play an open sicilian after all plays d4 and we do get a main main line time out of position after queen c7 castles knight to f6 bishop e3 all of this is well-known theory here black faces a choice bishop b4 sort of the typical time out of move when White quite often goes knight to a4, trying to get something going with that b6 square, with a lot of theory to follow. But Bruzon decides to play the more humble move, bishop to e7, and now the game transposes after f4, d6, to a setup that we call the Scheveningen. It was featured heavily in games between Karpov and Kasparov in the 80s for the, and the 90s for the World Championship. Kasparov really brought this setup to the limelight in his many battles with Karpov and it's been topical ever since. Also in the match Anand against Kasparov in 95, Anand tried his luck here on the white side. It is still as up to date as ever and the theoretical discussions are ongoing. King h1 is a typical move here. White faces a choice if he wants to play with a4 to restrict black from going b5 or he wants to ignore the queen side and dedicate his forces to the king side. And that's what Wei Yi does here. He goes king h1, castles, and queen to e1, intending to put the queen on g3, where it is at least in proximity to the black king. Knight takes d4, still theory. Bishop takes d4, b5. Queen to g3, bishop b7. White takes a timeout to stop black from going b4, so he plays a3. Rook a d8. This is preparing for a potential opening of the center as directed against white going e5 and then recapturing with the pawn because the bishop on d4 would be loose. In my childhood they used to play bishop c6 here intending queen b7 and then b4. That's another line but rook a d8 has been fashionable. And something like this is, yeah, line from the old days. But rook a d8 has been fashionable and both players no doubt still knew this position. Rook a e1, rook d7, strange looking move, making way for the other rook to go to e8 or d8. And in the game we will see it has another strange idea. Bishop to d3, white plays very logically, puts his pieces on the king side, directs his bishops against the castle black king and is hoping to open the position either by e5 or by f5 and black has to prepare himself for this onslaught. Here, strangely enough, the main move, according to theory, is a move rook to e8, which in some lines prepares for going e5. For example, if white were to play queen h3 here, which we're going to see in the game, then black would be well positioned to open the center up with e5 now that white no longer controls the square with his queen. So rook e8, arguably a better choice than what Bruzon plays in the game, a move I'm frankly not 100% sure why you would play this, but many people have the move queen to d8 back. Reinforcing the defenses of the f6 knight and in some lines maybe hoping to go d5 and then after e5 to play knight e4, blasting open the center. But it does feel a little suspect that move and Wei Yi continues attacking after queen to d8, 
Now goes queen h3, e5 is no longer possible. He's eyeing the h7 pawn, already threatening. Bishop takes f6, let's say, harmless move like rook to e8. Bishop takes f6 would already be a possibility. Bishop takes f6, e5. Even though black might still defend with bishop h4, you don't want to have this threat hanging over you, so black plays g6 here. Closing this diagonal, but opening that one, and Wei Yi, once again, wastes no time, very direct play, plays the move f5. All of this has already been seen. I'm not sure how far Wei Yi's preparation reached after e5, bishop e3, rook to e8. This position has been seen in predecessors, <laughs> in previous games, let's say. White, for example, tried the move queen f3 here in a game by Alexeyev, a strong Russian grandmaster. But Wei Yi may be still prepared, maybe not, maybe over the board inspiration, more or less refutes the black setup here with a beautiful attack. And that's where the game really starts. He goes f takes g. Note that he's not wasting any time moving his pieces twice, he just goes for it directly. Every piece has moved once except for the queen that took some time to get into attacking position on a tree. F takes g, h takes g. So far black looks solid. But Wei Yi now springs into action, goes knight to d5, and this knight cannot be ignored, threatening knight takes e7, or knight takes f6 in some lines, so it has to be captured. And Bruzon plays the logical move, knight takes d5, which turns out to be losing already. The only way to defend was bishop takes d5, but that is an ugly move. After e takes d5, you open up this bishop, you lose your own bishop, and white has a very serious attack already. One plan could be putting your queen on f3 and then pushing the g-pawn to get rid of this knight, or putting your queen on f3 and then going bishop to g5. There's also ideas with bishop takes g6 in the air. So this is a very unpleasant position for black, and it's not surprising Bruzon avoided this. He goes knight takes d5, and now if white were to go e takes d5, he could just capture with a bishop, defending his vulnerable f7 spot, and black would be fine. But that wasn't Wei Yi's intention. Instead, he goes for one of the more beautiful king hunts I've seen, at the very least in recent time. Many people compare it with the game Kasparov against Topalov from 99, where Kasparov also sacrificed a lot of material to drag the black king into the open. Wei Yi plays rook takes f7 here. He's already piece down after knight d5, and now he offers a whole rook, and this offer has to be accepted. He's threatening queen h7 checkmate, and if black were to parry that by knight to f6, he would lose after queen to e6, threatening, well, powerful discover check. Black would have to go king h8, and here it turns out that after bishop to g5, the black position is not defensible. White has too many threats, the biggest one being rook takes e7, followed by bishop takes f6, but also rook takes f6, or bishop takes f6 are threatened, this knight were to move, let's say knight h5, then queen takes g6 is coming, threatening checkmate. So, long story short, you have to accept the rook because else you're losing on the spot. King takes f7, rook can piece up, but the king is a little shaky, and Wei Yi continues to lure it into the open by playing queen h7 check. King e6 is the only move. If you went back, that's checkmate in one after bishop h6. He went forward to f6, then the rook stays on this f file, which is not very pleasant because after ed5, rook f1 check is on the agenda in many lines. There's also a checkmate threat in one with queen takes g6, and black is just totally lost because, well, there's no defense. Let's say bishop d5, queen g6, checkmate. So you have to go to e6, that's the only square. I'm not sure how far Wei Yi calculated the variations. He has a safety net here. If he wanted to, he could repeat moves with queen h3, king f7, queen h7. But of course, that's not his intention. Still, it's always nice when you, at least for me, if you start a sacrificial attack to have this backup option of a perpetual one when you're calculating the lines from far away. But Wei Yi continues, the king hunt goes e takes d5, and it turns out the king has to come out to play even further with king takes d5. Bishop takes d5 might look more natural, but here we start getting a feel of the depth of Wei Yi's attack because the geometry works in many lines and it's very complicated. Here white has to go bishop takes g6, 
threatening queen f7 checkmate and once again it turns out that black has no defense even though he's a rook up bishop to f6 looks logical but only until you spot bishop f5 checkmate because now the king doesn't have access to the f6 square anymore so black has no defense here try for yourself white is winning in every line sometimes it's winning by head count after bishop g2 king g2 d5 for example clearing this d6 square for the king white just grabs a rook and all of a sudden he would be a piece up so you cannot go bishop takes d5 and the king i'm sure he wasn't thrilled about it but has to continue his journey still he's a rook up and there's no direct checkmate and black is dreaming of going king to c6 now when all of a sudden his king would be pretty safe so Wei Yi has to invest another piece to keep the attack going and that's what he does. He plays a spectacular bishop e4 check. Stopping king c6 obviously because that's not a legal move. And the bishop has to be accepted but that means the king has to continue his journey. King e6 returning home once again would lose because of a very complicated variation. And Wei Yi once again I'm not sure how much he calculated or had to calculate but it is very impressive because even here there's only one winning line queen f5 check king f7 queen h7 king f8 because king e6 once again the king gets lured into the center and white now continues his mating attack with equal material threatening queen d3 checkmate so nothing works for black the king has to return to f8 and even this position from afar you're still a piece down well a rook down but you can capture this might not look that obvious but white is winning he just includes his last force into the attack goes rook f1 threatening queen takes g7 checkmate and once again there's no defense but try working all of this stuff out in your head after knight takes d5 not an easy feat so bishop e4 check and king takes e4 is forced and once again things are not so obvious the king can return to d5 and c6 he is a piece and a rook up maybe way maybe bruzon wasn't so sure if things were so bad for him here but way Yi continues with some very impressive moves he plays the move queen to f7 this yeah cuts off the king's retreat to d5 and threatens queen f3 checkmate and yeah this is what makes this game so beautiful all these quiet moves while being a lot of material down are really not so easy to come up with everyone can calculate check check and mate but to anticipate queen f7 and that black has no defense here is pretty amazing still the game ain't over queen f7 threatens mate in one so black has to do something about it and he does he goes bishop f6 blocking the f-file by the way, for completeness sake, I should mention the computer gives another solution here, the move c4, which is just as beautiful, also stopping king to d5, and after b takes c4, queen g6, king d5, queen f7, white is also winning, but Wei Yi's choice is just as strong with queen to f7. Bishop f6, now he sort of teases black by repeating moves one with bishop d2 check, the king has to go to d4, if we were to go to f5, rook f1 check would decide the issue. King returns to e4 and another quiet move, queen to b3 with the deadly threat of queen d3 checkmate. So the king has to continue his journey across the board, king d4, and Wei Yi repeats the position, bishop e3 check, king e4, but now he does destroy black streams of emerging with half a point from this game. And plays another very pretty quiet queen move queen to b3 threatening queen d3 checkmate always always a very direct threat and black makes only moves to parry those here the only move is king to f5 to avoid checkmate in one but the king will not find peace in this game rook to f1 check once again only move king g4 and the third quiet queen move Queen to d3. After this queen to f7 and queen to b3, now queen to d3, once again carrying some very heavy direct threats, in this case queen e2 check, queen d1 check, or queen takes g6, and it overstretches black's defenses. The king cannot keep running if it were to go to h5, queen d1 check lures him back out, and after king h4, 
Rook to f3 finishes him off, threatening rook h3 checkmate. Bishop takes f3, then there's queen takes f3. Once again, it turns out that black has no defense to queen h3 checkmate or g3 followed by g4. For example, bishop g5, queen h3 is the end of the game. So after queen d3, Bruzon finds a way to continue the fight. Credit to Bruzon, he's found all the only moves to keep the game going, but it is not enough. He gives this piece with one piece back with bishop takes g2 check, king takes g2, and queen a8 check, trying to, well, distract white a little bit, stop some of the white attacking resources, but it is too little too late. King back goes back to g1, and the white attack is still overwhelming still threatening queen g6 and queen e2. And there's nothing you can do. Bruzon once again goes for the only move, bishop to g5. So that queen takes g6 at least is no longer a check. But there's trouble from the other side, queen e2 check. King goes to h4. If we were to go to h3, then rook f3 check. Or the quiet bishop takes g5. Both finish the game. Rook f3 check, let's say. King h4, bishop f2 check. King to g4, rook f8 check, king h3, queen d3 check, king g4, queen g3 check, I'm just having fun, queen a, king h5, queen h3, bishop h4, queen h4 is checkmate. So king h4 was played, bishop f2 check, once again, no mercy for the poor king, can't go here, can't go here, has to go forward, king h3, and to finish the game, another quiet lethal move, the move bishop to e1. Once again, try anticipating this move or this position when you go knight d5, knight takes d5, rook takes f7. 36, bishop to e1, and the poor black king has no defense. The threat is rook f3 check, followed by queen g2 or well, let's make a neutral move. Let's say queen c6, then rook f3 check, king g4, queen g2 check, king h5, rook h3 check, bishop h4, rook takes h4 checkmate. There's nothing black can do about it. If he blocks rook f3, he goes e4, then queen g2 is checkmate in one move. If he tries, let's say, rook to f8, stopping rook f3, then white just takes on f8, and after queen takes f8, once again, queen g2 is checkmate. So there is just absolutely nothing you can do, and that's why Lazaro Bruzon decided to resign the game here, a fantastic game. Let's show one more line. If black goes bishop f4, trying to clear the f5 square for his king, then trouble comes from the other side. Queen d3 check, king to g4, queen takes g6 check, bishop to g5, h3 check, king takes h3, and queen f5 checkmate. Bruzon had seen enough after bishop e1, all these lines remained behind the scenes, and he resigned the game. What an attack by Mr. Wei Yi, the 16-year-old. A lot of buzz about him being the next Magnus Carlsen, the biggest potential challenger. Just keeps winning rating, rated above 27, 20 already at his young age, at 16. It's a lot to, <clears throat> lot to come from this young man, it looks like, and I can't wait to see him playing his first super tournaments against the likes of Carlsen, Caruana, Nakamura, Anand, and so on. There's a very exciting player over there, Wei Yi. Keep an eye on that guy. Thanks for watching. The Maybe the game of the century so far. Hard to judge. Let us know what you think. We'll be back with, hopefully, more beautiful attacks by Wei Yi. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.